And when you push those in, and I just kind of push them with my fingernails like this, then I can slide it. And then that opens it up and that's what exposes the reels. Hello there, Robert John Hadfield with Audio Mover here today. And what we've got is a DAT tape that came into the studio that is broken and we're going to do a repair on it. DAT tapes, the DAT, DAT, stands for digital audio tape. And if you didn't know about this, this format was pretty popular back in the 90s, especially. A lot of uh, musicians, bands would, would master their music onto a DAT tape, and then from there they'd go and you know, make the CDs or tapes or you know, uh, even vinyl, you know, when people would make it. Uh, was, a lot of times this was used for mastering, where prior to this, it would have been a half inch tape, quarter inch uh, analog tape. This was really the first time that we really started using digital tape in this way this thing called the digital audio tape and and it was it was pretty it was pretty cool because it was fairly versatile it had different different sampling rates for example you could sample it as 44 1 which was the normal cd sampling rate and then you had a higher sampling rate which was 48 and so you could you could do a little bit more with this supposedly get slightly higher quality a lot of people thought that this might replace the cassette tape uh, because it had a lot more capacity you had the ability to put track markers on it, uh, and and it just and it would sound better too than a cassette tape would because this was going to be digital. <clears throat> when I say track markers, what you could literally do is if you had 20 songs on this tape, you could put track markers on the tape itself, and then when you put it in your DAT player, you could just go you know track three, hit forward, and then the tape would just and it would and it would fast forward and rewind. It would so fast. Anyway, so it became a, a real, it was an industry standard. If you went into a recording studio in the 90s, there'd be a DAT player there it, because it became such a big deal. But it really only, it really only caught on in professional settings. It never really caught on in, in consumer, uh, consumer settings. But anyway, that's what, that's what this was. And so we get these, so at the studio, the Audio Mover Studio, we get a lot of different types of tapes sent in here. You know, cassette tapes are really our bread and butter. We get them literally by the hundreds of thousands. Uh, we, we had one project we did for a customer once where we converted, believe it or not, 115,000 cassette tapes to digital. DATs, we don't get nearly as much. I mean, I think the biggest DAT project we ever had maybe was 400 DATs that we got from some government agency. So they're not nearly as common as cassette tapes, not even close, not even in the same world. But there were some organizations that, that used these for a lot of different purposes way, way back when, but they don't get used a lot anymore. So what happens, the main thing that we get is that people that were former musicians that had recorded a lot of their stuff. That's why this says on here, orig let me flip over so you can see it. If you can read it, it says original master. What this probably was, was somebody had a band or was a musician and gone into a studio and recorded a bunch of things. And then this was the master that was being used to make the CDs, the cassette tapes, whatever they were going to make at the time with this. And, and so that's why this says original master. And we've had some, we've had some pretty cool artists send this stuff in to us before. So, I, and I don't know who this is. We just, we get packages and it just so happens that there was a note in this package that they sent in a whole bunch of DAT tapes and three of them were broken. So we're gonna make a few videos here just as we repair these, repair these tapes. So, so what we're gonna do here first, DAT tapes were a little unusual how they were put together. And you, you can see the tape hanging out right there. The, uh, you know, the, it's kind of it looks semi-normal from a, it almost looks like a mini DV tape and it is kind of the same principle how they work, but some slight variations, some slight differences. And this is almost the exact same size as a mini DV videotape. If you ever had those, a lot of times people mistake those when they come into the studio, they'll have a mini DV tape and and they don't realize, or they'll have a DAT tape and think it's a mini DV tape because they're so close. Matter of fact, pause right there. I'm gonna go grab one from the other room and you can kind of see the two side by side. Hang on a second. All right, so I just went and got a mini DV tape so you could kind of see the difference. So this is a, this is a mini DV videotape and this is a DAT tape. 
And you can see they're pretty close. You know, they're very similar in size. They'd be easy for somebody that doesn't look at these all day, every day to mistake for each other. And if you flip them over, they do look pretty different over here, but they have a similar mechanism for flipping the, you know, exposing the tape. This one has a similar thing uh, where you actually have to push this down and then, then the tape will move. That'll move out of the way. But anyway, once again, they're, they're kind of similar uh, the way they operate, but just slight, slight differences. So anyway, let's move this back aside. I'm going to go run this back to the digitizing area. Be right back. All right, so fortunately with this tape, we don't have to open it. And I'll show you because the, uh, they got, in, got knocked back in when I was talking, but the two ends are exposed and so we won't have to actually open it. I think on some of the other tapes and we'll probably have some other videos where we do have to and you'll see how that works. But this, this right here to expose the reels, this is stuck. And the way to expose it, you'll see right there and right there, there are these little kind of protrusions that have to be pushed in. And when you push those in, and I just kind of push them with my fingernails like this, then I can slide it. And then that opens it up and that's what exposes the reels. We have some people walking around working on the, <laughs> the roof right now. So we're getting a little bit of noise interrupting us. But anyway, so that exposes the, the reels. And then from there, that's what allows you to open up this here so you can get to the tape. Now you'll see what happens when you move this up. I want to see if you can catch this. As I move that out of the way, watch what happens right here to these little white levers. See how that pushes it up? See how that works? What that does is that then disengages the reel. You can kind of see how it moves a little bit when I do that. The reels won't, won't turn. You'll see that it's kind of stuck. But when that gets moved, then I can move the, the wheel. Anyway, that's a lot of these tapes, VHS tapes, mini DV tapes, a lot of these tapes, the cassette tape didn't do this. You could just spin them freely, but, but the next generation of tapes after the cassette tape, they did these, they made these little mechanisms that kept them from turning. If you take a VHS tape and you try to turn it, it won't turn. You have to put it in a machine for it to turn. And the difference is in a VHS tape, there's a little hole right here, roughly, that you actually have to push a little, you push something like this in and, and push it back and that disengages the reels. This case, this isn't like that, you know, you, it, it disengages there, but this was kind of the next generation of tapes where they learned we need to be able to lock these reels in place so that the tape's not falling out when people aren't using it. So what we're gonna do here is we're going to move this out of the way and then you're gonna see that we have these two ends of this tape exposed. Now we're going to, we need to get, uh, let's see here. So you see that I disengaged it. So I'm able to pull this tape out a little bit. Now you'll see that this end here is pretty damaged. And what we're going to do is we're going to, you'll, you'll see all that damaged tape right there. See how it's all kind of wrinkled and see if you can see that in that camera. I'm going to move this up a little bit. You can see that it's pretty damaged. This side uh, I need to pull it out a little bit more. A uh, little bit right there on the end, you can see there's some damage. Uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to basically just stick the two ends together. Now, the tape, uh, the, the head that reads the tape comes in from this side. So we want to do the repair on this side so that the adhesive that we put on the back of this tape does not ever touch the the the, the uh, head that it goes up against so in, in any way that's it so what we're going to do is we're going to make matching ends and we're going to do that using just a pair of scissors uh, by the way when you do this you know you end up using your thumb and actually a couple fingers while you're doing this i usually I, i've tried doing this with gloves and different things to keep your finger oils off it and it's just not realistic in my opinion so what I do is I just wash my hands really, really good before I get started. And then I just, that way I can handle to touch the tape. The other thing that we'll probably do when we play this is because we don't, I, th th those types of heads in this type of player is a little more sensitive, or a little more delicate, I should say, than, for example, a, a one in a cassette player. And what we, what we normally do once we do a repair 
and we're because we're going to have to remove a little bit of the tape. I mean, it, we're going to you're going to lose some of the audio when we do this. Is we'll put the tape in, we'll rewind it. We'll we'll actually before we do this, we'll kind of scoot it back a little bit by hand. We'll put it in the player, rewind it. We'll mark where the tape repair is on the timer, and then we'll play it up to just a few seconds before that. We'll stop it, pull it out, hand wind it forward past the repair so that the repair isn't ever actually going over the head. And that, that's a little bit of just an extra precaution to make sure there's not any of the other, all this stuff that we touched and whatever uh, getting on the head. It's just a precaution. We do that with a lot of different tapes that we work with here. Boy, they are making a racket up there. I don't know if you can hear it through the <laughs> through the microphone, but it's right now here in it, where we are in St. George, Utah. Spring is coming up, and it's this time of year that they go up there and they change all the filters and all the air conditioning units. And and they in some of uh there's some swamp coolers around for different units, and so they have to go up and do all the maintenance. Just so happens that's today, so we get to get interrupted by that. But anyway, so I'm going to go through the process. Of, of, split, of making the little cut right now. I'll show you how to do that. And then we have some uh, pre-cut little p pieces of adhesive that we'll put on this. And like I said, I do this all by hand. You used to be able to buy kits to do these. And it just, uh, to me, those, it, 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 I've done this enough times that it's just kind of, I, I don't really use those anymore. And it seems just as easy. And if you're just kind of steady, you can get the basically the same result this way. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and make this cut. So I got to kind of get in a little bit closer here to see what I'm doing. So what I'm going to do here, if you get this, is we're going to try to match up. There's the back side here. And this curl is going to make this really, really challenging. So I'm just going to cut that curl off. Once again, we're going to lose some of this tape. We know that ahead of time just because we're uh, just because of the nature of this, of, of what we're doing here. So I'm just going to cut off these really bad, bad pieces, kind of set them aside. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to have to just give me just a little bit more. Oh, you know what? I didn't know this, but check that out. This is actually going to be a little easier than I thought. I didn't realize that this particular tape, you see where we're right there at the leader? That's going to make this this repair actually really easy. So when they played this, for whatever reason, it broke right at the leader. And so what I'm going to do is we're just going to attach this straight to the leader, <coughs> excuse me, rather than attaching it to the to the oxide. Or the, well, it's not the same type of material, but rather than it attaching it there. So we're going to go and just make that cut. We're gonna cut off this. We're gonna pull a little bit more of this out. Yeah, this is gonna be much, much easier. I made it a little challenging on myself because we don't have a lot to work with right there, but we'll still be able to do it. So there's the end. We're gonna put this end next to it, and all we wanna do is have a matching I'm making this very hard for you to see. We want the two ends to match up pretty well, so we'll just put them right on top of each other, like so. And then what I'm gonna do is we're just gonna cut. Normally I cut them at an angle, but I don't have enough, enough room right there to do it really well. Okay. So now we're gonna take one of our pre-cut pieces of adhesive, put that right there on the leader. And then we're gonna match that right there. This is gonna be way easier. I'm gonna be slightly less concerned about it at this point. Just because, and that was it. I just, just stuck it together. And then that's gonna work just fine now. So I won't have to go through the precaution that I talked about earlier because, but that's all there is to it. You put the adhesive on the inside here so the head reads it on the outside. And then from here, we can just kind of spool it back in. And now this will play, this will play fine now. Close it up. And these, these latches, you'll see that that same little 
tab that, that helps you open it also locks it once it's open. So now I have to just kind of push those things in and then it closes like so. Anyway, so now that thing is going to be, it's gonna be ready to play. And like a lot of tapes, you know, the, the, you can tell what, if it's ready to go because the right side's empty and the left side is full. And then of course the tape moves from this side to that side. And dad tapes are pretty awesome because a lot of these things would, you could get hours and a couple of hours of recording on these. So this says 120. And yes, yeah, so you could you could have a couple of hours. So they were longer than cassette tapes. They they weren't all 120. There was a lot of them that they made that were shorter. But these things were had just a little more versatile because you could do more things with them. And so anyway, that, that's it. So now the thing's repaired and we'll be able to go in and digitize this tape and and then get it back to the customer. And so anyway, that's what we do here at Audio Mover. By the way, if you have old audio and video tapes, it doesn't have to be DATS. <clears throat> we do VHS tapes, cassette tapes, reel-to-reel -reel tapes, Hi8, Video8, Digital8, Mini DV. I mean, you go down the line, Mini Disc. I mean, we have all kinds of things for whatever you have. We probably have a player for it because we do we do these things all the time for people all over the country. So if you go to AudioMover.com, you can start an order there, and then you can take send your tapes in. And if you have and if you have if you need to talk to somebody about this, a lot of people, when you get start the process of digitizing your tapes, these things are very personal. It, 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 you know, we'll get tapes like this where people recorded these in a studio long ago, and these are really important to them. You know, this was their band, or this was their career as a musician, and, you know, these were songs they wrote, and, and they want to talk and say, hey, you know, tell me a little bit about what we're going to do, or I want to get extra copies, or I want to get these for my family, or, you know, and, and just give us a buzz. The phone number's on the website, and we can, we'll talk through and, and, you know, customize whatever you need to do with your project. So, anyway, with that, have a fantastic day.